I, I am ready to start the, the wash now. This one I uh, did earlier. Just so I can let you see them side by side. And you get an idea of the deeper areas of shade that you can achieve with the wash. Now, starting with the, whoops, there's a bit for here, starting with the lower hull. I've given that a sand wash using enamel paint. Get my hair out of the way. It's quite a sticky paint, to be honest, this enamel paint. It's humbrol. But it's a, a coat of sand all over it. Just to give it a different hue from the top. Put some on the underside as well, on the tracks. And when it's dry, which to be safe would be the next day, I'm going to put just a bit of brown enamel wash over the wheels and other features in there just to show them a bit. I made sure of brushing off most of the dust from the wheels, but not all of it. And also catch any, the wash is very thin, I'll want to run down, just catch it down the base of the wheels and draw it off with your brush. So this one's been pin washed. Hopefully you can see a difference there. The features are standing out a bit more. So I'm now going to pin wash this one and show you the, the process that I follow. Now any kind of enamel wash will do fine. I'm currently using this AK Interactive one because it's nice and dark. I've also got a bottle of thinner, which you'll see, um, see me using in a minute. I've got two brushes, one old, totally wrecked, one and an old one that's still got a point. So just remember, I've so a, a, a tissue. When you're working with enamel paints, it's very easy to knock the bottle over and it will go like, oh, it's, it's just like water, it'll go absolutely everywhere in no time at all. And also, got to give it a good shake. Now you need to keep shaking the bottle as you're using it. You will know yourself when it starts to get too thin. You may want to leave it for a little while to reach that consistency that you prefer. But you may also find that it then becomes um, too thin too quick. I prefer starting thick till it goes a bit thin. And over that process I will use, just move this out of the shot for focus, I will use less and less thinner. Now this is just a little bottle with some thinner in it, nothing special in that. But I use that for tidying up, but also for preparing the surface. Now I'll typically start on the engine deck because there's a lot of areas on there for shading. Now I'm going to do what I call keying the surface. I want the thin enamel paint to be drawn most strongly to these features. So I'm going to put some thinner around them. To help with that process. I'm only going to do this section here to start with. So I need to move this over. Don't load your brush too much and then it's going to be a quick touch. And let the capillary action do the work for you as much as possible. As you can see, it's a process that you can control quite easily. Just need a bit more in this corner. And along the back of that edge. Now, I've cleaned my brush off on a tissue. 
taking a little bit of thinner and where needed I'm going to push any stray wash back into the areas I want the shade to go into. Try and take some off, clean the brush, take some off these hinges and it'll thin what wash is on there to encourage it to go into the deeper features. Now we need to start picking out these smaller features. Where possible, I prefer to use paint that's been lifted from an area, another area to paint these small features. But here there wasn't too much needing pushed back. So I'm going to have to draw some off. Now I cleaned the, the brush on a tissue each time before I put the brush into the thinner. Now, a lot of other tutorials will show you letting the wash dry, then coming in and tidying it up. I prefer to do it at the same time as the wash is going on to reduce the possibility of darkening the flat panels too much. But you can always come back to it. You always have time with enamel wash. That's too much paint. You've always got time to come back as long as you're attentive. See I'm moving the paint around the figure there. A little bit of a wash on the spare wheels. Soften that down, spread it around. I will be doing highlights over the smaller features as well. Once the wash has finally dried. That's enough for the rear panel. If I now go to the front panel, I'm going to do the same process. And a bit of thinner into these features but not so much that it's swimming in paint oh, and thinner sorry oops couldn't see what I was doing there I put a big blob on but that's okay because I can show you how to work that. So, clean the brush. I've got to get rid of that. There, just push it into the side. Because I've done it when it's wet, there's less chance of tiny bits sticking to the surface. Pushing that wash back. These hatches may require me to come back when they're a bit drier. These are quite deep areas. But 
but the features themselves are quite, are quite small. And with some paint that I have picked up from thinner and wool wash, I'm just pick, picking out those hatches. And then I need a bit of thinner on these features, it has to be too heavily shaded. knock that back a bit. Now I'm going to repeat the process along the sides, along that feature there and then I'll leave it to dry for a bit. and touch up any areas that aren't quite dark enough. Now I'll be doing this over all the tanks so it's quite time consuming and needs a lot of patience so be sure to give yourself sufficient time. It's you know, putting washes on is very tricky if you get impatient you're just going to end up with a black tank and that's not going to be very attractive. So they're just pushing any excess away and into the features that you want to be shading. So I'm going to crack on with the rest of them and the next time you see them they'll be shady top and bottom so to speak. Okay, just a quick recap on the wash. It's all in place and just to be clear I've used a pin wash for the shading and a weathering wash for the hull. Now hopefully you can see that this, the lower hull's got a sandy look as do the tracks. And then there's a, a great deal more definition across the tank and all the shading. So after I did this there was a, a degree of tidy up required. Uh, I didn't go too hard, hard on any highlighting or re-highlighting. I don't want it to look as though the, all the edges are glowing. Um, one thing I have done is using the what's becoming more and more the base colour but in this case it's, it's more like a highlight in the Iraqi sand I have added an edge to these large chipped areas just to help focus them a little bit more. I've not done it on the smaller ones except in areas where I felt so it maybe needed to break up the panel a little bit or accentuate the modulation a little bit. And what I've also done is with some light grey is just cut the edges of any exposed areas of large chipping and that just helps the edge stand out basically. So this this is the last tidy up on these guys before I move on to detailing all of the, the various bits of storage. This guy's had the edge put on. It's, it helps around that hatch to give it an edge against the shade. What I'm going to do now is do some highlighting around these edges just to make them pop a little bit better and also at the same time I may tidy up any edges that didn't quite go on right first time. So I'm using my crazy thin tiny little brush again. It's got to be nice and wet for this guys or you're going to be dragging it everywhere. Now I don't like this bit here so I need to get that less spiky looking. I 
and it could actually do with a bit of a grey inner edge just so it pops against that shade now I constantly have to keep refreshing my brush when I'm doing this what to try and break this up you can see I'm, I'm dotting I'm not painting a nice smooth line following the shape that's already there I'm breaking it up a bit that's actually going on a little bit too dry Now I'm also going to just catch the edges of that, scratch and that. Just to help break that panel up a bit. I'll see if I can get into this and still show it on the camera. Now on this fender here. The brush is too dry. When the brush is as small as this, it will dry very quickly. Now that, it will look, look bright to start with but it will darken down but it will still give it a nice discernible edge it will help, it'll help accentuate the grey without making it stand out too much. So I'm just going to repeat that across the tank. There's a lot of work in the turret, but it's the same idea. And once that's done, oh, I've also where required um, chipped the decals. Uh, once that's done, we'll be ready for the detailing. This area here was, was a bit tricky to shade, by the way. And when it was shaded, I then went and repainted to a large extent the hatch around the decals just so it's got the shape the visible shape okay so back next with some work on the tools and storage so I have made good progress with the various storage and tools and spare tracks on these guys so I'm going to take you through the various colours that I use the techniques are very simple I'll do it bit by bit I'm going to start with the uh, the box here I've used the dark colour because the vehicle's obviously very light and I want it to stand out so I've undercoated it with German Camo Black Brown and I am going to use as the main colour German Camo Medium Brown I'm going to use a smallish brush for this Start with the edges Paint's a little bit wet for the control I need Using the side of the brush here just to bounce it around. And 
this is a bit where more care is required. Doing these inside edges. I'm not too fussed about getting a very straight line. As it is, I want to have a, a bit of a wood grain effect. And then in places I'll just join those two lines together. Try not to be try not to be too symmetrical. Now there isn't any panelling on the sides, so I'm just going to carefully paint in some lines. Once again, I'm not too worried about how straight they are. A bit trickier down here, so I'll just put part of the line in. Tidy up the sides. Now here I want to try and keep a distinction between the panels so I'm just painting little blobs on the end. At the same time I'm going to paint the wire cutters at the same base coat on them as the box. The wire cutters were made, uh, the handles were made from Bakerlite. I believe they were either brown or black. Now the highlight here is a really strong highlight colour. It's uh, orange brown. I mean you can see that's very strong. So you have to be very careful how you apply it. Using my thin brush at this stage I'll be using the side of the brush And I'm actually just bouncing the brush along. It's a highlight, a very strong highlight that does not need to be on every every area of the edge to create the highlight. You can make something look highlighted without painting the entire edge. Excuse me when I, uh, I'm painting really fine lines, <laughs> fine lines, I tend not to breathe so please excuse the silence. And then I flip it around. You can perhaps see how I've got all my hands supporting Oh, I missed the back. Right, I'll have to come back to that. Um, all my hands support the, the figure and I've actually got this hand supporting this hand as well. Try and keep things as tight as possible. Consider for all these fine little lines what is the best angle of approach. And then you see the brush is too dry. So you've got to get it refreshed. That's not the best angle of approach. Just trying to get it on camera, so hopefully you can see this. And then just some little internal lines in these panels. I 
and then very gently, very carefully put a final highlight on that baker light. So I'll go back and I'll tidy up that and then we'll move on to the rest of the tools. Now the tools, the metal parts of the tools are, with the exception of the jack, just going to be German grey with a highlight of London grey. Because it's bigger, the jack I'm going to paint with uh, another coat of dark grey before the highlight is painted. So we just need a little bit of paint. I'm also be painting the machine gun with the same colour as the tools. You just have to carefully work around. I quite often find that mistakes are unavoidable, especially as I work up towards edges. But these brackets I'll be repainting at some point, just so they, they pop as much as the tools do. And I will typically try to work on the top and the side at the same time so I can control what's going on the side, especially where it's most visible. I don't want a little white, sorry, light of halo around the base. I want that grey to go right the way down till it touches the flat of the panel underneath. You don't have to be so careful around the back, just don't touch the inside of the hull. Hopefully you're seeing this okay. Please excuse my silence again, but once again there was no breathing. <laughs> this is a situation you really don't want to be having to go back and tidy up from. Fixing brackets is one thing. If I get paint like 
boom, there, no problem, can fix that easily. It's fixing the deck and the hull and, and such like, you don't want to be in that position. Got to carefully work this so there's no base colour showing, but I'm not touching these features, it's really tucked in tight against nearly there. Looking down on top, I can see some lighter areas, so there's more opportunity to just fix that. And then... Ducking in there in this last bit. I shall do the MG in the turret in a minute. Next up, oh, tell you what, yeah, what the heck, I'll do this, uh, I'll not show you every single brush stroke as it's going on, just the really fiddly ones, so for the MG, it's not really, as you can see, it's a big lump, it's a big massive lump, it's not very um, to scale, but that's good for durability. I'm just going to paint little dots on it to give the impression of a, an air cooling um, cover. Doesn't have to be more than that. And tiny little highlight. Make sure the paint is wet enough for it to flow easily off the brush and there you go I'm going to put a coat of dark grey on there and then a highlight of a light grey and that's metallic stunning 